on the conference, just another little tidbit about uh, Wisconsin dairy. Did you know that every cow in Wisconsin generates $36,000 in economic activity per year? Um, so think of, for us farmers, you know, think of all the, the cows that we have times 36,000. Wow, that's a lot of economic impact. Um, so I just wanna thank everybody for spending time with us today. We know that you've got a lot going on in your lives. There's a lot happening in the world right now. And we are just so appreciative of uh, everybody tuning in. Um, we, uh, we have you know, well over a hundred people on at any given time. We had close to 300 registrations for the day. So you know, we're just so humbled. Um, so we're gonna keep moving with that. And uh, our next panel discussion it's a very important one that dovetails nicely with everything we've been discussing. And to introduce this session, I'd like to welcome Dr. Heather White, who is the faculty director for the Dairy Innovation Hub, who will uh, introduce our moderator after a few comments. Thank you, Maria. And again, to echo the gratitude for joining us today and hearing from all of the great speakers, the panelists and the researchers that are sharing. The idea behind the Dairy Innovation Hub has been an effort by many who were committed to the thought that research at the University of Wisconsin could provide a strong advantage to our Wisconsin dairy community, from farm to consumption and all the numerous impacts in between. Just as our last panel highlighted, this is the Wisconsin idea in action. In addition to the tireless support of our stakeholders, the role and support from legislative champions and the UW system, have been instrumental in making the vision for the hub a reality. We're honored to have a few of these champions here with us today and look forward to hearing what they have to say. To introduce and moderate our legislative panel, I'd like to welcome Chad Zuliger from the Dairy Business Association. Chad, welcome. Thank you, Heather, and, and thank you, Maria. Uh, very excited to be with you today and uh, introduce a legislative panel uh, that was very intimately involved and engaged with the Dairy Innovation Hub uh, funding and getting it through the state legislature to the governor's desk. Um, with me today is uh, Senator Howard Markline. Senator Markline is an author of legislation that brought the Dairy Innovation Hub forward. Along with Senator Mark Klein, Representative Tony Kurtz, and Representative Dave Considine, both serving on the uh, Assembly Agriculture Committee and both champions in their individual caucuses for the Dairy Innovation Hub. Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for being with us today. I'd like to turn it over to Senator Mark Klein to introduce himself, move to Representative Kurtz, and then Representative Considine. Senator Mark Klein. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for all you do uh, for the dairy industry. Uh, I'm from uh, Southwest Wisconsin, uh, Spring Green area. Uh, I'm in the 17th Senate District. Um, I believe I have the most agriculturally dependent Senate District in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, dairy is a huge part of that. And so when the, uh, this whole idea of the, of the uh, uh, hub uh, came about, uh, it was something that I didn't take me long to warm up to. And uh, I have UW Platteville in my uh, Senate district, so I got a, a fond spot in my heart for my local uh, campus there, and uh, I'm just excited with the way this uh, legislation came together. I was uh, glad with the way the, the Joint Finance Committee was able to uh, find the funding for this last year and uh, look forward to the discussion today. Thank you. Uh, Representative Kurtz. Well, good afternoon once again. Thanks for having me and thanks for everything you do for our wonderful dairy industry in Wisconsin. So I'm uh, Tony Kurtz. I represent the, what I always say, the best district, the 50th Assembly District. Some of you may knew my, my predecessor. His name was Representative Ed Brooks. Ed was a dairy farmer for many, many years. And uh, I don't dairy farm, but I do organic row crops. And so uh, I'm in Senator Mark Lines. I'm in his northern part of his district. And I think he's probably the only senator that has two representatives in his district that are farmers. Uh, Travis Trammell is a dairy farmer um, also. So once again, I'm looking forward to this panel. Uh, this is me when this was first introduced, it's kind of a no brainer. We're the dairy state. 
we need to take the lead on doing all the research for everything we can to promote dairy and all the great thing it does for our state and what it can do for the country and the world, to be honest with you. Super, thank you, Representative Kurtz. Representative Constantine. Yeah, hello everyone. Thanks for being here and uh, thanks for all that each one of you contribute to the dairy industry in our state. But more than that, for what you contribute to our whole state um, in regards to dollars and knowledge produced and all of those things. Uh, I am a retired dairy goat farmer. I milked 140 head of dairy goats for 20 years uh, in a younger time um, and then chose to get out of dairying in that specific way. Uh, but I'm still very close to a lot of dairy farmers around me uh, and good friends and uh, just think that dairying is really important and we need to continue to advance that. Um, the Dairy Innovation Hub, I think, was a great idea. Uh, the Dairy Task Force 2.0 that suggested that uh, almost unanimously, I think it was just a great idea and I'm glad it's moving forward and hope to help it continue to move forward. Super, thank you. And uh, and again, welcome everybody. Um, really just kind of want to give a brief background on the Dairy Innovation Hub, where it came from. Um, it was created as an agricultural research engine on the University of Wisconsin on the three ag campuses at Madison, Platteville, and River Falls. Um, it comes from a proposal that stemmed from the 2017 Dairy Summit and was included in one of the top recommendations from Dairy Task Force 2.0. I know that all three of you were, were very close to that. Um, initial funding for the project, I think was, was right around 8.6 million, kind of went through a couple machinations um, through the state budget. It was not initially included in the governor's state budget and therefore the legislation was introduced. However, as it kind of worked through the process, ended up back in the state budget. And that's kind of where I, I want to start with and, and get your experiences. Um, first off, um, how important was the collaborative approach the Dairy Innovation Hub took um, to your support for that? And, and can you speak to a little bit about how important that is and, and how that really does help drive uh, the dairy innovation uh, sector in, in, in the state of Wisconsin, working on those three collaborative uh, campuses? We'll start uh, first with uh, Representative Kurtz. Do you want to start us, please? No, I, I think that was one of the key, that collaboration between the three campuses. And let, let's be honest, I was, I was listening earlier before uh, we, we came on air, and one of the farmers said that he, he, he thinks 20% of the cows in our nation are touched by those three campuses within a three-hour drive. I mean, that's pretty impressive. And so why wouldn't we leverage the assets, the talent that we have there? And, and let's be honest, when you think of Platteville, you, you you think of ag, you think River Falls, you think of ag. And of course, Madison being, you know, the, 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 the flagship of the three, uh, I, I think it just makes great sense. It's good synergy to use all those expertise and, and on the, all those three campuses. Super. Um, and gentlemen, I, I, I'm happy to, to facilitate the discussion. I'd really like the three of you to, to talk together and, and share your experiences. And, and Senator Markline, uh, if you could just address the collaborative approach of the Dairy Innovation Hub and why that was important. And then kind of uh, represent uh, Constantine, then, then just chime right in any time. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think that for me, uh, it was very important that there was a collaboration between the three uh, campuses. Obviously, you know, I've got W. Platteville in, in my uh, district, so, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm biased. Uh, but every, all three of those campuses have some incredible uh, core um, departments in, in agriculture. Uh, they're all, um, you know, been around for a long time. They've got deep roots in agriculture, deep roots in, in, in dairy. So uh, it just made sense that uh, they would work together. And I was encouraged early on before, uh, before this thing started, when uh, we got together a few times with um, folks from uh, UW-Madison, uh, UW-Platteville, and UW-River Falls. And I could tell that uh, those uh, faculty were very interested in working together. It, this wasn't a forced marriage uh, by any means between those three uh, campuses. So, um, and I think sometimes in, in uh, higher education, like we maybe do in a lot of instances, we tend to operate sometimes in silos, to use a farm term. And 
you know, we need to break down some of those walls, I think, periodically. And uh, this is just a great opportunity that we can work together. Uh, we can share resources. I've been encouraged by the collaboration that's occur that occurred before the Dairy Innovation Hub uh, even kicked off. And then uh, the collaboration that has uh, existed uh, since that time. Yeah, let's face it in political terms. Um, it's really important that they collaborate um, but rather than fight for funds. Uh, this every budget, <laughs> we can hear the different parts of the university system sometimes, you know, push me to the top, push me to the top. And so when we talk about getting a budget passed and getting an idea like this um, through the assembly and the Senate, I think it's important that they work together um, and then they're not fighting with each other just over what monies are available, but we're doing what is best with the dollars that we have. And the other thing is I'm always supportive of saying that no one person, no one group has all the answers. Um, probably no one group has any of the right answers, but if we work together and we really discuss things and don't come to the table with our minds made up, that's when the best ideas come out. And I think that's what happened that resulted in the Dairy Innovation Hub. You know, and we also, from a political standpoint, you know, uh, with three campuses being involved um, by uh, the mere geographic nature of, of those uh, campuses, we are uh, sort of enlisting the support of the legislators that are in, in, in all those districts, you know, so, I mean, I think strategically that was uh, pretty important as opposed to any one of us advocating for uh, a program on, on one of our campuses. I just don't think that if this has been uh, any one campus alone advocating for the, for the Dairy Innovation Hub that it would have uh, succeeded. Even maybe just scientifically, I think it's important to have them spread around the state like that. There's a big difference in the farmland that the cows are sitting on or that their crops um, that they're eating come from between the plains around Madison and Arlington to the hills uh, around Platteville uh, to what's happening up at River Falls. Those are uh, somewhat different backgrounds that those cattle are in. And I think that can make a difference too. Well, Senator Senator Mark, I point. want to just start with you on a question real quick and, and because of your position on the Joint Finance Committee and, and sort of the intimate details of, of how this process worked, um, you know, what, what, what points in the Dairy Hub uh, did you use to work with your colleagues, sell your colleagues on, emphasize, you know, why the Dairy Innovation Hub was important to the state of Wisconsin? Um, and did you have any pushback? What were their concerns brought forward? As I started out the session in, in talking about, there was a great expectation that this would be initially part of the governor's budget, and then it wasn't, and then it was again. Um, could you kind of talk about that process? And, and again, working with, um, you know, your colleagues, uh, you know, did you have to, to, to really, was this a hard sell anywhere? And, and for the other legislators as well, uh, Representative Kurtz and Constantine, in your caucuses, uh, you know, what was what were the main selling points you had? But starting with Senator Mark Line in his position on joint finance and, and working with the budget writing uh, committee. So, you know, I think the um, the thing that was probably most attractive about this was that this wasn't an idea that was hatched in the Capitol. This was an idea, as, as you've talked about earlier, uh, that came out of uh, Dairy Task Force 2.0. Uh, this is what the, the our dairy industry wanted. One of our biggest industries, one of the biggest economic drivers in this state. This is what they wanted and what they uh, believed was important. So I think the mere fact that this idea originated uh, by farmers, by our uh, our egg uh, industry, uh, got it off to a to a good start. And uh, and again, the, the fact that. Uh, just the economic impact that the dairy industry has uh, in this state. When you look at the investment we're making uh, with the Dairy Innovation Hub, it's really quite small uh, considering the uh, both the direct and indirect impact of the dairy uh, industry in Wisconsin. So, um, you know, as I, uh, <clears throat> if, if this had been um, a request that came out of the Capitol, 
I think it would have uh, met with a lot of resistance. If this was a request that solely came out of our universities, I think it would have met with a lot of resistance. Uh, but the fact that it was driven by our, uh, our farmers in the egg uh, industry, our dairy industry, uh, is what really uh, you know, made this uh, successful from the start. And you know, I had to talk to a lot of people, you know, obviously on Joint Finance Committee and then others in the, in the legislature to, to uh, make sure that they were on board with uh, this investment. I just want to echo what Senator Markline said. You know, it's interesting. All the agricultural groups came together and their lobbying efforts, let's be honest, in the Capitol to me, uh, made the difference. And, and to echo what Senator Markline, it, it was farmer driven talking to their, you know, like the DBA or Farmers Union or, or Wisconsin Farm Bureau, talking to them, talking to their members, their members talking to legislators saying, hey, this is so important. And then kind of behind closed doors, I, I think we're very fortunate in our area. Uh, we have a lot of rural legislators that, that in behind closed doors, we all literally got up and said, hey, this is important. Uh, the Nancy Vandermeers, the Travis Trannels, the Todd Novaks, the Shannon Zimmermans, the Trig Pronchinskis, these guys and gals that really don't do a lot of things, but they do a lot of things behind closed doors. And I, I give them a lot of credit. And so these are rural legislators, legislators that represent a lot of dairy farmers. And uh, like I said, behind closed doors, they were advocating for this. And, uh, and, and luckily, we got it, got, it, got it across the finish line. Thank you. Representative Considine, you have a little different perspective uh, in the Democratic caucus. Um, how, how did that, uh, how did those discussions occur in, in your caucus? And, and did you similarly have a wide support or were there some folks you had to kind of bring along and, and explain this to? I don't think we had a real hard time selling this at all or that it was a real uh, hard push at all. It can look that way from um, looking from the inside out when you look at the fact that every Democrat in the assembly voted against the budget that it was included in. <laughs> um, but then when you, know, when you understand politics and you understand that we had the governor's office, we felt like that gave him the power to do some vetoing and to add some things that were important to us, um, which he did. And I'm excited about those things. But the, the Dairy Innovation Hub stayed right there and was you know, fully supported by everyone. And I didn't there's a lot of concern among, I think, both parties about the shrinking number of farms, the shrinking strength of our farming community, um, the lack of uh, a lot of the technology used on our farm, farms comes from Europe, you know, and to, I'm, I'm excited. And that was one of the things I used to sell it is like, we need to be doing this research here. We ought to be having the technology not be imported from Europe. Um, to feed our calves, let's say. Um, but we should be doing some of that here. And I'm excited because I think that's the Dairy Innovation Hub is going to help us get back in that industry. And I think that's really important. Excellent. I want to just, um, if I could, go back to something I heard a little earlier uh, regarding this, the stakeholders in, in the Dairy Innovation Hub and, and the fact that this came, the proposal came from outside of the Capitol. Um, Given that there was such wide support in the dairy community and, and, and folks like myself and my organization, the Dairy Business Association, were adamantly you know, in favor of this and, and, and working in the Capitol and, and educating members and talking about this, now that, it, now that it's come to fruition and we've seen some significant progress and, and really this summit is, is a, a testament to what is done, I mean, they really hit the ground running. Um, what are you looking for? Um, what do you want stakeholders like the Dairy Business Association and, and farmers on the ground and even the general public to know about the Dairy Hub? And, and what are your expectations now going forward with that? Uh, with some of the, the proposals we've heard about today in this session, but just kind of going forward, what would you say to the groups, the ag groups and the general public about the Dairy Hub and, and how can they get involved and what more um, can they do to, to ensure success? Well, and, and, uh, this is not a, this is not a uh, one-time investment. It was never intended to be a one-time investment. And so, uh, cause if it's a one-time investment, it's a, we're a failure. And 
you know, this is an ongoing commitment that the legislature needs to make uh, to the industry. And because it's an ongoing commitment, I think the ongoing uh, communication from the industry, from our farmers, uh, needs to continue. Because uh, the minute that dries up, I think the money is going to dry up. And so, you know, um, Chad, you talked about your organization and many other uh, egg organizations that got behind the, the Dairy Innovation Hub. Um, that uh, conversation needs to continue. And, uh, you know, they need to, every one of those uh, groups and, and uh, your, your farmers on the ground need to be contacting legislators here uh, as the budget is being developed uh, next spring uh, to let them know, let us know how important this is. Because, you know, if we don't, if we don't, uh, I mean, obviously I understand this because I've, I was the author of the bill, but, um, there, you know, if you're a, a legislator from Brookfield, um, you don't, and you're not connected to the dairy industry, um, you know, you're going to fill in the, uh, the, the blanks, uh, the vacuum. So, you know, we need to, we, you need to keep uh, pounding that drum, talking about the importance of it, talking about the short term wins, uh, the stuff that's going on all over. Uh, the campuses talk about the collaboration that's occurring uh, between those three uh, campuses, and uh, um, and the more excitement that um, that I perceive on the ground out of my district, the more excited I am about it. And I think uh, concentrating on some of the things that we're already concentrating on, um, you know, one of the main points we're investing in how to do dairy and maintain our environment. And I think selling that is really important to my side of the aisle, especially, but I think that everybody wants clean water. We've seen that and selling that this is this research and a lot of what we're doing here is to help facilitate that for our state. And we know that if we get farmers and we encourage them not force them, but we encourage them to do the right thing. They're going to do it, and we find incentives to do that. I think that's what the Dairy Innovation the Hub does. Um, the other thing I do, I think we ought to try to get this in. I think it is already in the governor's budget, but we need to go to those the governor's listening sessions that he's already having, and we need to have farmers show up there, and dairymen show up there, and university people show up there and show support for this in the budget right away from the get-go. You know, I want to echo what what Dave and Senator Markline both said. I mean, you've got to be at the table. I mean, you, you, as farmers, as, as trade groups, you've got to. And I, I think there's a senator that says this all the time. If you're if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And so uh, Senator Markline, that's one of his favorite things. Uh, and, and it's so true because you have to be part of the conversation. I can't stress that enough. And so don't just because you, you've got this now, uh, you need to stay stay relevant, stay, keep talking to us, talking to the governor's office, talking to DATCAP. We have to, you always have to maintain your presence and what, what we can improve on. Great. Thank you. Um, want to shift a little bit now. The four, the four core competencies of the Dairy Innovation Hub include the land and water conservation, health and nutrition, animal health and welfare, and then business development and growing strong communities. Um, four very important competencies I think we all agree um, are critical uh, for the success, particularly in rural Wisconsin. Can you speak to those and, and how those affect other areas of, of policy you might be working on? Obviously, land and water quality has uh, been first and foremost in the mind of this governor um, since he was elected and made 2019 the year of clean drinking water. And, and we got a long way down the road on that, but a long way yet to go. Um, can you speak to those core competencies, pick one or two, and, and, and kind of talk about how those dovetail into other legislative priorities or, or policy positions you might be working on or, or might be being developed in your caucuses? Well, I'll, I'll just start. You know, I sat on the, the speaker's task force on, on water quality, and, and you, you have to think the chair of that committee was uh, Representative Todd Novak. Travis Trannell was on that, so many other, and it was bipartisan. And to what Representative Considine said earlier, Having those three campuses and the unique soil characteristics, 
you know, terrain, all that stuff is important when we go back to water quality. One thing we learned at the Water Quality Task Force, all the different events we did throughout the different 12 hearings throughout the state, is soil matters. The terrain matters. All that box goes into water quality and the long-term sustainability. And so having that part of the dairy hub, to me, I mean, I, 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 it just it's a really good leverage that we're going to have to help, like you mentioned earlier, the water quality moving forward, because, you know, as it was said earlier, we all want clean water. I mean, that that's an, you know, that's not a bipartisan, it shouldn't be a partisan issue. And uh, I think this is going to be a, a great step forward, and especially having those three campuses and those, those different unique terrain features and soil types to help study this. I think perhaps the, the leg that's going to get off the least might be the, for lack of a better word, and I know for some of us farmers, this is a square word, the animal welfare word or of how well our animals are doing um, and their health and their well-being. And I think concentrating on that is um, really important. It brings our communities together. We don't want our farms to divide people. And it helps bring our communities together. People know and they see that animals are treated well and that animals are healthy. Um, and this research to make sure that happens, that's, that leg is really important for a lot of people who don't understand agriculture as, as well as they might. They don't live in it. Um, uh, and they don't see all the things that you and I see. I know every dairy farmer that I know knows that the better his animals feel, the better they're going to produce. <laughs> and that's, I don't care whether you're dealing with animals or kids in school, because I was a school teacher too. You know, if the child feels well, they learn well and they do well. And the same thing's true of our cows. If they feel well, they, they milk well and, and, and they're just relating to each other well. I think on, on the, uh, the, the water uh, quality, you know, um, as somebody mentioned earlier, you know, um, I think for the, for the most part, farmers want to do the right thing. And to the extent that we can provide uh, evidence and, and science to show uh, what the best practices are for uh, preserving the uh, cleanliness of our water, the easier it is for farmers to, to, uh, to jump on board and, and, and to do the right thing. Um, there aren't too many farmers that I know that want to have bad water. I mean, water is essential for every dairy. You know, we, we need uh, clean water, obviously, for for our herds, for the health of our herds. But, uh, and also, you know, another part of this is the, the economic development part of it. Um, you know, when I, I've got a lot of small little towns in my, uh, in my Senate district, and a lot of those main streets uh, in, those, uh, in those little towns um, go the way agriculture goes in those areas. And I'll tell you, the, the small shops, uh, the, you know, the, the veterinary clinics, the ag supply uh, stores, um, uh, just the Main Street hardware stores uh, in those communities um, are dependent in, in part on the success of our dairy industry. So, um, you know, I'm also interested in seeing the evidence that's produced that um, ties the success of um, those Main Street businesses, those, uh, uh, you know, service uh, businesses, those uh, retail shops, uh, back to the dairy industry in our local community. So uh, that should be interesting evidence, I think, down the road here. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, that a big part is when you talk about the land and water quality use, you know, farmers care as much about their water for their families and their animals as, as everybody else does. And, and I think we're seeing a lot more leaning forward, leaning in on that from, from the producer community um, through our farmer-led watershed groups and, and the like. But uh, but really, I think the Dairy Innovation Hub is, is a great example of, of where we can collaborate and, and find solutions like that through the mechanism of the hub. Um, we may have already touched on this a little bit, and I think maybe you talked to the producers and what the producers could do. Um, but what would you like to, how would you like the hub to engage with you now? Uh, obviously, getting the message out that, that what they're doing is important work. But, um, you know, what advice would you have for the campuses? and the project leaders uh, working on hub research. Do you have any thoughts or are there any avenues you'd like them to, to go down or, or take a look at uh, on the nutritional side? Again, the health of our, our kids and, and the, 
nine essential nutrients and, and milk and, and dairy products. Um, are, are there any particular areas, obviously the land and water quality, uh, the, the animal nutrition representative Constantine or the animal health? Um, and you just kind of picked one of those key areas in those competencies, but, but where would you like to see uh, hub research go or how would you like them to be interacting and, and, and addressing matters that are important to you or uh, really the legislature? One of the big concerns people always talk about about university people is they think they live in, I'll use Howard's term, that they live in a silo, they live in this academic world uh, and they don't really get what's going on. And so I guess my suggest, make sure that, that our researchers are getting out to farmers too, um, not just sitting in the lab, but being out in the real world and talking to farmers about what they need, about the struggles they're having, um, because obviously that they're the grassroots and to do the work well, they need to be listening to them. Well, I think uh, just a matter of uh, keeping, keeping all of us informed as to what's going on um, on those campuses. Um, you know, we're, especially over the next uh, six, seven months, you know, um, I know I'm going to be incredibly busy uh, with the state budget. So, but, you know, you, you need to keep us posted as to the progress that's being made uh, on all those uh, projects. And uh, don't assume that we know, you know, I think that, um, you know, and I tell um, a lot, the, the word lobbyist has, has a bad connotation, but um, I think one of the, the, the biggest roles for a, a lobbyist is to, is to be an educator, to educate us about what is going on, what should I know about? Uh, and uh, so I would um, encourage, you know, again, uh, those campuses, uh, you know, anybody involved with the Dairy Innovation Hub, keep us informed. Um, you, can't, uh, you can't sell it or you can't sell it, you can't uh, educate us too much on what's going on. No, I'd like to echo that too. I mean, like for instance, we talked about water quality, you know, have, have the, the, the scientists go in front of the environmental committee and hey, give us a, give an update. Same thing with what's going on with dairy, you know, come to the ag committee and say, hey, this is what we've been working on. I mean, have, you know, asked to be, to talk to the, to the committees, to give an up informational uh, briefing. Uh, it's like, we don't know what we don't know. And so uh, I, I think those are great points that you need just to talk to us. We need to edu educate us just like, you know, DBA or Farm Bureau educates us. You know, those scientists need to do the same. Yeah, right. and as, as we kind of wind down, oh, I'm sorry, Representative, go ahead. Well, I, I just have a really good example of that. I, so I couldn't get on to listen this morning at 10 o'clock. Tried like crazy for 45 minutes and talked to media to Sonic Foundry and I just couldn't get on. Um, but in the process of doing that, I got to the, um, Dairy Innovation Hub's website and discovered that there's a quarterly newsletter that comes out and signed up for it. But I didn't know that until I got onto that site. I might not have known that talking right now had I not had those struggles. And we need to know that. I, that's information that I will now be getting because I signed up for that newsletter. Um, so make sure we know about those things. That's a great point. Thanks for sharing that, Representative. I, I think we will uh, communicate with the, the hub administrators, Maria and Heather, and, and make sure that they have a complete list of our legislators' email addresses and, and get them all signed up for that. That sounds like a great idea and obviously very important way to communicate and let people know what the progress being made is. So thank you for that. As we, as we sort of begin to wind down, um, I want to let everybody, all of our listeners and, and attendees know that they can submit questions um, to any of the lawmakers. Um, and we're happy to, to get those questions out. If there's something specific you would like to ask, let us know. Um, and, and now I want to ask a, a, a question that, that's pertinent for today and, and, and something that's all on all of our minds, which is the COVID-19 health emergency and, and, and the future. Um, talk about the Dairy Innovation Hub and speak to it in our overall efforts in dairy and, and dairy recovery in light of COVID and the four years leading up to this time. Um, how, how can the Dairy Innovation Hub be helpful um, at this time, particularly in light of the low 
prices historically, but as we move now through this transition, through the disruption in the supply chain, as we start to come out of it, um, what do you see for a role in the hub in that and in, in sort of transitioning us through this COVID emergency back to hopefully soon a normal economy? Senator Markline, can I start with you? Sure, sure. You know, I, I mean, uh, COVID has been uh, incredibly disruptive to all our lives, including the dairy industry. You know, and you know, and and I in, in my district, uh, you know, I have I had uh, constituents. I heard uh, some people earlier on talking about dumping milk, and uh, you know, the the emotional. Um, toll that that took for farmers that uh, strive so hard to produce the highest quality product in the world and then to dump it, uh, you know, it just, uh, you know, it, it just incredible. So, uh, and, you know, and, I, and we've gone through an incredible price roller coaster. Um, I don't, you know, when you think back, when I think back to, you know, six, seven months ago, uh, like in our, our cheese industry, um, you know, I don't know that the dairy farm that I was raised on, if we knew um, where our cheese ended up, but I'll tell you what, this year it made a huge difference, whether you were shipping your cheese into the um, uh, grocery chain market or into the uh, restaurant uh, business. And, and I've got, I've got constituents in my district that were selling cheese into the Chicago and New York uh, restaurant markets. And I'll tell you what, it was dead. There wasn't, it didn't matter how good a cheese they were uh, producing, uh, it was dead. And so, you know, one of the things that this did was, um, I think it highlighted at least for, for some farmers, uh, a better understanding of where, where the end product is. It isn't a matter of just watching that milk go on a, a truck and then, thinking that their, their risk is done because, uh, you know, the, the uh, plants that were, um, you know, didn't have a market for their cheese. They were the ones that sometimes were forced to make some tough decisions as far as dumping milk and, and stuff. So anyway, but uh, no, I just, um, COVID has, has been a, um, a disruption, incredible disruption in our, our marketplace and, and, uh, more and more of our food is being eaten at home. Uh, we're learning how to cook again. Uh, and so, you know, you know, long term, I mean, who knows? Some, some of this may bode well for uh, at least certain segments of our, uh, our egg industry. So uh, we certainly, it certainly raised a lot of risk uh, with our uh, employees and a number of our dairies. I, I talked to a number of dairies in my district where they were worried about um, um, infections and and so many of the uh, people picked the uh, COVID up not on the farm but off farm you know uh, on the weekends and so they brought that back and that caused uh, you know a lot of concern so anyway so um, I know Representative Kurtz uh, and I were on the radio the other day and, and he talked about um, you know battle fatigue and and Representative Kirst talked about COVID, you know, fatigue. And I think that I we're in that right now. Uh, people are sick of it. I, they just want their lives to go back to normal, whatever normal is anymore. And uh, they want this to be over. And, and uh, But we need to be diligent um, in, the, in the dairy industry. We need, all, all need to be diligent in our own personal lives too. And we'll get through this somehow. Thank you. Representative Kurtz or Constantine, do you want to add anything to that? Well, you know, one of the, the core missions of the Innovation Hub is enriching human health and nutrition. And, you know, if you think about it, if you hear all the studies that, uh, you know, since this horrible COVID it has affected our, our nation and our world, you know, you're hearing different studies about, hey, this can help or this might, you know, it, you know, milk and a lot of the, the stuff in dairy could actually be they, they are beneficial. So it'd be interesting to see if there's some research on, you know, hey, this type of uh, milk or enzyme and this, you know, it actually has some preventive measures. I mean, I, I think that's research because let's be honest, COVID's going to be around. Uh, you know, we've got a vaccine coming on board. It's not going away. And I think um, some research into that 
might not be a be a bad thing. I think I, I mean, not as if we haven't before with um, farmers and dairy farmers, but the whole mental health issue and accessing help and knowing where to access help and how to access help. Uh, you know, DATCAP has the farm center you can seek and go get some help there and ways to get help. And I think it's really important for all of us right now with this crisis to take care of ourselves. And one of the ways of taking care of ourselves is if we start getting down and out or if we start taking things out on employees or God forbid we start taking it out on the cows, we take care of ourselves before it gets that far. And so I just want to talk about the mental health and that the farm center has resources available and this is a time to stay on top of that stuff. Great. Um, I'm not seeing any questions yet. And, and I just want to take a minute to, to thank each of you again for your uh, supportive role and, and funding mechanism to the Dairy Innovation Hub and, and your support and, and generating support through the legislature and obviously your constant support in your capacities on, on a committees and, and Senator now your uh, joint finance role. Um, you guys have just been really tremendous and, and I kind of want to open it up to see if there's anything you want to share about the Dairy Innovation Hub, but really kind of take a look out um, into the future and talk about, uh, you know, what, what do you see for the future of the Dairy Hub? Do you see the, the hub growing? I think there were discussions of other campuses that might be interested. We really focused on our ag campuses, but do you see this uh, growing out beyond those three campuses or is there a, is there a, uh, product or innovation specifically uh, in your unique positions as farming and working so close with the farming community that you would like to see the, the Dairy Innovation Hub pursue. Um, I hope I made that broad enough to, to give you ample opportunity to, to speak. Um, let's start with uh, Representative Constantine. Do you want to start with us, please? I talked a little bit about it earlier, and I know we're already working on uh, technology, and I know how... Uh, strongly farms need to have broadband uh, to, to do all of the work that they need to do. So we need to push for that um, because all of this stuff is tied um, to the internet and to being able to connect everything around the farm. So I, I think that's really important. Um, and that might be what causes us to spread to other campuses because other campuses have differences like there's differences in the ag research there's differences in the kind of technology and engineering that different campuses do. And I think that's a place where the Dairy Innovation Hub can grow and really help build our economy. Excellent. Representative Kurtz? No, I mean, what, like, what I are you, big picture, what, 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 where do you see the hub going? Um, is it something that, that could be expanded or, or is there a specific item that, that you would really like to see uh, focused on with the Dairy Innovation Hub? Uh, innovation that you would like to see occur well but this i'm going to give, give a shameless plug here last session i worked on an export bill that uh matter of fact representative constantine <laughs> we we worked on that quite a bit together and i, I you know I, i'm a big believer in, in exports for dairy i think that's something uh i know that's maybe not part of the dairy innovation hub but it's something i i definitely want uh farmers to realize you know our state exports less than 3% of our agricultural products. And when you talk about a hundred billion dollar industry, ag, you know, dairy being close to almost 50 billion of that, and we let, we export less than 3%. We have a, we have a tremendous opportunity to grow that. And, uh, and you know, perhaps the Dairy Innovation Hub could be, be part of that down the road on how we expand that, that, that footprint. Great. And Senator Markline, I'll let you uh, take it from here. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would I wouldn't uh, expand at this time till you know we just this is the first uh, budget cycle that we even have the Dairy Innovation Hub. So uh, you know, before you start adding uh, different uh, you know branches and whatever, uh, I would I would make sure that this concept is incredibly successful first, and uh, down the road, if we are and we will be successful, then. Uh, I think maybe we can talk about expanding to other campuses, but for now, I think we need to uh, focus on those three campuses, make sure that, you know, things are going incredibly well before we start uh, selling that to other campuses. 
Excellent. I think that's sage advice. We do have uh, one question, and this is basically for all three legislators. Uh, a member of our audience is asking, um, what is the best way to communicate with lawmakers? Is it through your email, um, phone calls, and then um, how much communication is too much communication? Senator Markline. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, you know, probably uh, emails, although I'll tell you, you know, if, if it's one of my uh, campuses, uh, a researcher or something working on this, um, I'd appreciate a phone call because uh, I can ask questions then uh, right away. Um, uh, emails are, are, are wonderful, are fine. Um, don't do um, canned uh, emails. You know, if I get uh, 50 emails of the same message from, you know, that tells me you really aren't too concerned about it because if you were really serious about it, you would have taken the time to type your own email. So. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, this is about relationships. So um, you can have a relationship with us any way that you feel comfortable. But uh, the important thing is to have a relationship so that when you need our support, need our vote on on funding that in the next budget, uh, you've we, we have a relationship with you. We know who you are and, and why this is so important to you. Excellent. Representatives, anything to add there? I can tell you that I um, I was amazed at how many magazines my office gets. Let's start with that one, okay? From every organization in the state. Um, and I don't know what the rest of my colleagues do, but I at least peruse through every one of those things myself. Now, I'm, you know, if there's something, I, I'm not saying I read them, uh, that would be virtually impossible, but I peruse them. Um, and, you know, the other part of that question is, do we track those contacts? In my office, we definitely do. I suspect in the other offices, they do as well. Um, because even sometimes numbers of contacts are important for us when we're making a decision. I, yep. Those of you who remember the Bradley Center debacle and all that stuff, I got 999 emails against that and one for it. That was important information to have. So. I would communicate with us like the Senator said, any way you feel comfortable, um, we'll ignore you or tell you if it's too much. <laughs> One or the other. No, I, I agree with with the other two speakers. I, you know, any way you feel comfortable, you know, I, I get a lot of handwritten letters and trust me, when I get a handwritten letter, those are one of the first things I open and read. Great. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we have come to the, the end of our time. I really appreciate the, the time and effort you put into to being with us today and answering our questions. And uh, with that, I will turn it back to Maria. Thanks, Chad. And thank you to uh, our three elected leaders. I know how busy you all are, particularly right now. And so I just want to extend our gratitude uh, to all of you for making this a priority. Um, in your day.